tomorrow on Speed, a very special event. The World Superbike Championship returns to the United States for a double header at Miller Motorsports Park right outside Salt Lake City. American Ben Spees returns to home soil to take on the world's best. Coverage starts at 5 p.m. Eastern Time exclusively on Speed. Ben Spees has already won the pole for that event. He has been on fire in his rookie season, exceeding most people's expectations. This battle here between Chad Reed and Andrew Short exceeding our expectations. Look at Reed putting the pressure on, David. And he had a tear-off from trying to clear his vision, stuck on his hand, had to be messing up his concentration, still makes the move around oh, the nice. outside. Andrew was doing the right thing by trying to protect the inside, but it was so bumpy and hard-packed, he couldn't be as aggressive. And uh, he made the pass no problem around the outside. That's a fast line, but you see how hard he had to push it Woo! to make that stick. Yeah, he just leaned that bike into that corner. So that moves Reed up a spot. Meanwhile, Mike Alessi out front, closing the gap on Josh Grant. Grant, a little mistake there at the end of that section of jump. So Ward Grant expected to be the rider uh, closing on Alessi as the race is concluded. Alessi is actually turning it around, and he's putting some pressure on as Reed is putting pressure on Tedesco now for third. Reed is starting to feel it now. And see, he was going to the outside right there, but... Uh, Oh, he, there he's trying to change it up. I mean, he, this track has got lines everywhere, and now that he's caught in Tedesco so fast, he, I don't think he's exactly sure where Tedesco's going to go, and trying to keep the pressure on him, but if you follow, you see there, again, taking a different line. You want to keep the rider ahead of you guessing. And if you just want to make a lot of noise back there and make them worry more about you, and then uh, it's a little bit easier to force him into a mistake, but Tedesco's holding his own pretty good so far. It's a 30 minute moto here and 10 minutes have gone by, just past 10 minutes in fact. So Reed seems in the second half of the race to put in his best laps. Put in his best laps in the second half. The first moto uh, did similar damage coming through the pack in our previous race at Glen Helen. So he might have more to give. The problem is these guys are battling about eight seconds behind Alessi and Grant who are out front. Let's see which battle <laughs> materializes first. Can Reed get to Desco? Can Alessi get Grant? Or will these two guys catch the two guys out front? It's exciting here well, at Hangtown. Under 10 seconds is reachable with, you know, basically just inside 19 minutes to go, plus two laps at, at the uh, expiration of this time. When that expires, then they'll get a two-lap board and then a white flag. Ciao! Oh, man. Nice save. <laughs> He's aggressive, and Tedesco felt that. So the next time, if Chad hasn't gotten him, by the time they get back to that section, Tedesco will be guessing on, well, let's see, <laughs> where do I go through here? Because Chad's obviously fast in this section. Now, Chad Reed did not race this tour for the last two years. Oh, oh wait a minute. A little bit of smoke or steam coming off of the lower left side of the engine of uh, Chad Reed. Now, Reed admits that uh, that type of technique outdoors where you just pin it whatever line you're in and try to hold on is something that he's got to try to learn again after a few years off. Supercross is very precise. Here is your battle for the lead. Alessi continuing to close on Josh Grant, but uh, Grant, he's dealt with this type of pressure from Alessi and a variety of other riders before. And as we mentioned at Glen Helen, he is not afraid to bang bars. So passing this guy is going to be very difficult. Yeah, I was just thinking that these guys could, I've watched them all during their amateur careers and they're not nice always, you know, and so this could get into uh, a little bit of a pride battle and, and, you know, it's for the moto win, so Josh isn't going to just let him have it, but Mike's really going to have to earn it. If they get into kind of a cat and mouse weird deal, that's going to be to the advantage of Reed and Tedesco. We're back there trying to keep this gap close and it's not cool. You know, we talked to some of these riders before this season began, and we were doing some interviews with Josh Grant. said, don't hold back your true feelings, and he said, I never do. And that's really what it comes down to for Grant, a kid out of Riverside, California, who has now moved to North Carolina, working with that Joe Gibbs Toyota Yamaha team. But uh, he has always been the kind of guy who will let it hang out. He's not afraid of battles. He's not afraid to bang bars. And he might be in one of those bar-banging battles before long. He's got Alessi on his rear wheel. He's getting good. Stay tuned to speed. So Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship, part of the Alliance. The Alliance, the Alliance of Action Sports. Josh Grant leads the way here at Hangtown. Took advantage of a good start. Let's look at our progressive whole shot replay. David Bailey, break it down for us. Well, I see Alessi getting out of there really nice, but what he didn't count on was that 33 getting there at the same time. And anytime you have the inside, you're going to push whoever that is wide. He pushes Mike clear to the outside. Watch Mike just slam into the outside. Almost went off the racetrack there and almost went off in the next corner and then four or five corners later he did go off the racetrack. That shows you how bad he wants it. And he doesn't have to win this moto. 
He won the first moto, and if he stays right where he is, he'll still win the overall for the day because Josh was ninth in moto one. Let's go down to Eric. Well, guys, both Michael Lessie and Josh Grant, as far as their bike setups go, Michael Lessie has kept his bike set up exactly the same as he had for that first moto when he took the win. Josh Grant, on the other hand, he's made several changes throughout the day. He changed his shock between practice in the first moto and then again to a new shock between the first moto and the second moto, as well as his forks. He said he was less than thrilled with the first moto, so he wants to make sure that he proves a point for the second moto. Oh! oh! Well, he's less than thrilled with that. He goes feet off the pegs, but still manages to hold Alessi off, and now Alessi feet off the pegs. Unbelievable action. Alessi's going to maintain the inside. What an exchange. Alessi has a lead for how long? Here comes Grant right back at it. And Grant able to chop down to the inside. Alessi even further to the inside. And both of those guys, I can't believe that Grant stayed on the motorcycle, but I can't believe Alessi did, and they're still going at it. Uh, wheel to wheel. Alessi right here, he's got that inside. He's going to control it. See, they took his yeah, time. Yeah, but Grant comes right back to step over the bar. They were talking. Now Grant slows down. That's the cat and mouse we're talking about, David. Yeah, it looked like Mike could have just kept it wide open and gone all the way around the outside, but he knows what's up. That, this is the cat and mouse thing I was talking exactly. about. And they this could allow him. Yeah, this could allow the other guys to get up. And Grant's going to try to take the left seat all the way to the outside. What did we say earlier? Josh Grant fears no one. He'll bang bars if he has to. They almost did about four times through that exchange. And the lesson, remember, has the overall even if he finishes second, so he's got to be careful. Don't play around with Grant too much. Get knocked down, that could change everything. they got to be about out of breath right now. <laughs> yeah. Josh looked like a Hollywood stuntman. Watch, he goes into the corner, he lays it over, loses his foot, and it, I, I can't believe he didn't high side. And he was in the way of Mike, so Mike couldn't do anything. He dives to the inside, he almost crashes. That is a Geico top 10 nominee. That's why we give you the replay there. And somehow through all that, it's exactly where it was before with Grant just a few bike lengths in front of Alessi. What does the heart rate go to? About 300 when you're off the side of the motorcycle? As high as it'll go. They're close to max right now. <laughs> so Alessi is uh, trying to reestablish himself in second. And look at that. Chad Reed has definitely closed the gap because... Grant was going so slow trying to block the lessee from getting by. Hearing all that crowd noise was music to Chad's ears, but he knows something's going on up front. He knows those kids. They're young. They want each want to win, and chances are they're messing each other up just a little bit. And uh, see, he's already closed the gap now. And Tedesco giving Reed a good run. Tedesco in fourth, staying with him. And now, as we near the 20-minute mark of this race, this is where Chad has been fast. So not only is he closing the gap because the riders in front of him are slowing each other down, but Chad, I believe, is speeding up as well. So this could end up being a three- or four-rider battle for this Moto win. Unless he's back there in second. He's a smart kid. In fact, as you say, he might be the most Moto-educated of anyone in this field. They have all the math figured out, all the numbers figured out. He knows that he doesn't need to beat Reed or Grant to win the overall here. Reed just might be a pretty good He's definitely closing that gap, and now he can see Alessi in front of him. Well, when those guys do that exchange, fall off the bike and hang on to it, whatever it takes, it takes a lot out of you. And they took a lap right there, I guarantee you, and just they both just went, okay, wow. Yeah, let me uh, let me gather myself here a little bit. And that's, of course, advantage Chad Reed. And, you know, if they're not able to pull back out of that and, and get back up to the pace they were running before that exchange, uh, that Chad's going to close even more. Okay, back to our leader. This is Josh Grant, and you can definitely see that Alessi is taking an opportunity to catch his breath there. And, uh, I'm not sure if he's going to go after Grant the same way. Remember, a 1-2 would give him the overall, so it be very interesting, the strategy that Mike Alessi chooses to play here. Looks to me like in that one section alone, Alessi actually closed the gap on Grant, yeah, so I think he wants to go back at it. Got into that rut down there and got just a little bit squirrely. The back end kind of danced around, and... You know, hats off to Joe Gibbs Racing. I mean, they've been involved in motocross for just a few short years, and I mean, when they want to change shocks and change forks and make changes and stuff, I mean, they have the wherewithal to, to build those parts and bring a little something new to motocross. I mean, they're, they're not relying on the factory for everything. Yamaha supplies a lot of stuff, but they're not happy with it. They think they can make it better. Um, have you been to the Joe Gibbs shop? Can it's you imagine lovely. what they can make over there? Yeah. So Josh has the ability to to uh, tell them, hey, this is what I would really like, and they can build it. Well, they want to build 
a race and championship winning team. And Josh Grant might just be the rider to take them there. They're going to start by trying to win this second moto. He's got a pair of Suzuki's that are going to try to take it away from him. Can Josh Grant hang on? There's the mechanic, Alex Ewing. He sure hopes so. We'll be back with more right after this.